Y'all listening to Jones's jukebox? <laughs> <laughs> that was the uh, Stranglers, and that song was called Duchess. And we have Mr. John Lydon in the studio. Hello, Steve. Good to see ya. One sex pistol to another. Excellent, excellent. How you doing? All righty. Did you uh, did you go on the old? Uh, it's on tonight, right? The uh... yeah, I think they're airing it tonight. Yeah, Jimmy Kimmel last night. Yeah. Uh, under the d- disguise of it was my fiftieth birthday, but you know we've. We set it up to go and have a bitch about the Royal, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah. And quite right and all. Self-appointed sods. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't mind getting something for nothing, but I ain't going to pay for the privilege. Right. You know what it is, Steve? It's like they're, they're asking us to pay them mm. to tell us we're famous. Mm-hmm. Well, we're not. We're infamous. We're already famous. Yeah. Done that. Been there. Ain't we already famous? Do we need them to tell us we're famous? Well, it'd be nice if they paid us for the well, privilege. You've got medical or something. I don't mind being paid to be told I'm famous, but I ain't paying them. So there you go. Good on you. But it's more to it than just the, uh, the seating, isn't it? I mean, it's... No, the, they, I they, did. your lyrics in the yeah. bleeding... Not even your lyrics, right? Yeah, no, the bigger truth is, right, and you know this, I'm just waffling about the money, I couldn't give a toss, but, I mean, I've had uh, problems with this Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for a long time, and in particular the museum. Now, you remember years ago when I was running Rotten TV for VH1? Right. Well, we were going to shoot an episode there at the museum, and they wouldn't give me permission to film. Uh, and in particular not to film this so-called alleged sex pistols exhibit they had, which by all accounts was somewhere under a staircase down a corner at the end of a basement. But um, in it was a, a set of lyrics that they claimed was the original like uh, things. That, you know, like I wrote them out all in one go and autographed right. them. Phony by anyone's stretch of the imagination, and I told them so. But they told me that their sources were irrefutable. So, in other words, my word isn't good enough, right. but my words are. Right, right. Right, that's, that's wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so a museum that's based on, what well, you know, selling you a load of old cack and phony baloney, you can't be supporting. Mm-hmm. If they're doing stuff like that with our career years back, why are we going to hand ourselves on a platter to them now? Mm-hmm. They were never interested in the truth in the first place, mm-hmm. and now all they're going to get is the truth. Well, they can they can put your new lyrics up now in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, yes. <laughs> what ones are those be? The, the, you know, the statement. <laughs> oh, well, no, that's all of us, particularly the bad spelling oh, yes. of congratulations. I wrote that. Yes, that was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> it needed to be said. We fought it out, we worked it out, and we knew what would be done, you know. But you're the lyricist, mate. You've always... always well, I'm the mouthpiece, and I... And you've always written all the lyrics. Remember Lady, Lazy Sod? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wrote that in my bedroom. I, you completely changed the lyrics around. <laughs> well, you wanted it to be this sad song. <laughs> <laughs> it was sort of a sad song at the end. <laughs> it was sad before you got hold of it. Well, God, if you're the bloke up there doing the howling and hollering, you've got to be believing what you're doing. Yeah. And it's always been like that. When we did versions of songs, I mean, we always skipped them around a bit. Yeah. We made no fun our own thing completely. Yeah. Completely. Do you ever listen to Never Mind the Bollocks? I do. I do. Every now and again, it's still as solid as ever. Yeah. I don't know how we did it, Steve. I know. I don't know. Which is, you know, I think because we had no conceits. Right. You know, and we were confused, as you should be. Right. It's the best thing is to just go in and get on with it. Yeah. We didn't have any time to sit around and, you know, wax lyrical or, or ponder great orchestra pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it just flowed natural. What do, you, what do you think? One take vocals. My oh, no, God, I know, I know. 21 guitar takes. <laughs> hey, not that many. <laughs> it wasn't even me, it was Chris Bedding. Oh, well, no, he just loved the sound you were getting and he just wanted to rack you up into a wall mm-hmm. of things, which is very important, I think. First year out of the trough, you know, and, and Mr Jones here, you know, you were being acknowledged as having a bit mm. of a special sound. Mm. Me, I was one for the loony cage. No, not at all, mate. I did all right. You remember the first six months of rehearsing? I mean, I couldn't, I didn't know what a tune was. I know. It was and good. you were going, look, look, this is where you start, twang, twang. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? <laughs> and met... the first gig when I heard myself, I think it was... St Martin's College. Is it, was it that, monitors? Yeah. I actually heard what I sounded like, and well, I did, realised I, what agony I was putting you lot no, through. No, that, that was that was the uh, marquee. Marquee, was the first, Eddie in the hot rods. Yeah, yeah. 
That was the first time you had monitors. I think we only did like. Well, I'd, I'd keep them in, you remember? Yeah, yeah. Just couldn't stand the sound of my own voice. Yeah. God. <laughs> Well, we're off to a good start, yeah. It's good. Go, going <laughs> down memory lane, it's excellent. What you are... Well, people don't know. You know, I mean, they, they assume we were this Malcolm game. And yes, Malcolm had his fair part in there. And we're, and, and we're up to any old shenanigans if it suited us. Right. But we worked really all right. Mm -hmm. Even though we never really spoke about it. But when you're 16, 17, 18, 19, you ain't got much to say anyway. Right. Not about, like, the inner intellectual depths and workings of a band. I never thought we'd get anywhere, do you? Mm. Well, you knew we'd get to St. Martin's Lane, which was 25 yards You'd across the, the corner street from the where we rehearsed. Oh, yeah, and... Denmark Street. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to see the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, do, you ever, uh, do, you, do you ever run into McLaren? Nah. You'd never run into him? Nah. You'd never cross paths any, any time? Years and years ago, I met him, uh, Bernie Rhodes, the old Clash manager. Whatever happened to him? Faded off the planet. Just completely out? Yeah. I think what happened is they all started trying to claim credit for the same things and they were all hopping over each other. Yeah. Uh, that, that was the only time I'd seen Malcolm in a long time and uh, we decided to do a runner and leave Bernie with the bill. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Typical Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm one for that myself every now and again. What 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 do you think you would do if you did run into him? Would you talk, talk to him? Just say hello. I've got no animosity against Malcolm. That's good. Never. I mean, you know, I like to use my wicked tongue and so does he, but I don't think there's anything really evil in it. You know, he's waffling on right now in, in Selfridges as, yeah. we, as we speak. Yeah. It's either tomorrow or, yeah. or right now. They're yeah. doing this 30 year thing at Selfridges. Yeah. Steve, this is from a bloke who's saying, like, uh, the shame about me is I can't live without my Sex Pistols legacy. And he can't and stop. He, and he can't yeah. stop talking. He can't let it go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, you know, well, at least we're getting some money out of it. Well, at least we wrote the songs. He ain't getting nothing out of it, I don't think. Well, it's a bit sad, isn't it? He's just trying to get some acknowledgement. Well, he's invented this new current thing of um, anti-management. This is how he's explaining himself now. Right. right. You know, that he guarantees a catastrophe. Oh, that's, you know. That's hard to do. <laughs> very clever, though, isn't it? Typical him. Can I have another cup of coffee before I get the runs? Did you have a nice bathroom? I did. I squeaked a mouse. Excellent. <laughs> can we get some coffee? Is there a wiper out there? Someone who can uh, get Mr. In Lyden. the porno industry, I think they're known as buffers. Buffers. <laughs> buffers, buffers. And... <laughs> um, You're doing we... all right here, Steve. It's a really good, good set-up studio. Look at that. Look at that. Bingo. You ask and you shall receive a bucket full of coffee. Excellent. Um, a cardboard box of coffee, that is novel. It's, it's, it's all the latest craze, oh, you know. Starbucks. Box right. of coffee. Uh, sorry, pardon my French. That wasn't me. Uh, so, I mean, where do we stand in the world? We've done a lot. We have. We've wrote some of the best songs ever, I think. We broke every boundary, every, every barrier put in front of us. We've done it with no help from the record industry. Not ever. Mm. And now they're, what, claiming something off us. Right. Don't like that. Don't you have an album out in England? Yeah, can't get it released here. Yeah. Right. We can't get Never Mind the Bollocks re-released here. It's bizarre, though, isn't it? The uh, the record industry right now. It, it ain't even a. It's, like, it's barely a record industry. It's like distribution, isn't it? It's like warehouses. Yeah. yeah. You know, they just want to send a wagon load off of stuff here and there. No responsibility. I don't think most people even know. Say, like, you know, some company just bought so and so, and they probably got nothing to do with music. Yeah. And they have no idea what they're selling. It's just, it's just a whole different. It's game a, well, now. it should be like you, you buy a Jaguar in America, and it's a Ford engine. Right. Right. right, that's that's what you're getting there. You're getting the logo, but not the content. Yeah, and it's all unless about... it's a Sex Pistol. <laughs> yeah, hold on. You heard this bloke? Now you've won nothing, but here's your BFH, your bus fare home. You know that bloke? No. Nope. Bullseye. He's like, anyway, never mind. <laughs> no, I won't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Like, if you don't, if you don't even. Uh, 
if you don't get a record in Walmart, you, you, you ain't got a hope in the hell of selling Yeah, 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 the way charts. But we were always hit with nonsense and cons like that. You know, if we don't chart WH Smith in the first week, you like we, make, yeah. we'll never be in the charts no matter how many you sell after. Well, it never mattered, and it still doesn't. I mean, I run Pill, I, I run my solo stuff, I've been through the pistols, and it's still the same way. I still don't have chart positions, I still don't have radio play. Yeah. I'm doing all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need those things, yeah. to, you know? It's hokey little silly sods like Green Day that come in and think by sucking <laughs> up to that system that you're somehow beating the system, you're not. Right. You've become part of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they're as, they're as, as inducted as anybody could ever hope to be. I was thinking the other day that they Sticky tape on a duck's ass. That's Green Day. They probably they, <laughs> they probably wouldn't even have, they would have been laughed at if they would have been around in seventy seven. They wouldn't have survived it, Steve. We had to wear the wings. You, you know? know what I mean? All right, the hammerings and idings were a bit severe, weren't yeah. they? Yeah, they 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 wouldn't have. No. I, I was thinking that the other day. They wouldn't have even they Toy would have been town. laughed at. Yeah. Toy town. We made it easy for them to come in and nick kind of our things off us, which is all right. Yeah. It's nice, but they're silly rich fat kids, and so, you know. But they shouldn't go around saying that we weren't the real deal. Yeah. I was reading in an interview. Yeah, 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 that's saucy. That's really saucy. I don't know if they're taking the, the mick or what. Don't say it. Just tell the truth. Exactly. You don't need to fib. Exactly. All right? And I've, so I've had problems with them about that and a few other things. You know, we never liked the term punk originally either, did we? What? It was this Caroline Coon, Caroline Coon brought exactly. it up in a Melody Maker article, King of Punk. Oh, King? Me? No. <laughs> uh, you know, here I am putting down the monarchy. <laughs> Irony or what? Mm. And there it was, Punk, Mr Big's toy boy. And now, you know, Green Day quite <laughs> happily are running to be Mr Big's toy boy. It's amazing. It was hard times we went through. Yeah. It's Serious. Like, it's, like, it's like footballers back in the 70s, didn't make a diner. You know, they got on like 200 quid a week. Yeah. If they were lucky, like top footballers. Yeah. And now they make stupid money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, it's, it's more like softball now, watching it. Except for Arsenal. I know, don't start. Arsenal. <laughs> I wash me hands, I wash me face, and I watch me <laughs> Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a good, I'll tell you what, that was a great game. As much yeah. as I hate to say, say so, that was a brilliant game. No, good football's good football. Mm -hmm. We're talking English here. Yeah, that was a great game. That was a great game of footy. Who you, oh, you got you got a tough one, though. You've got Juventus next. Oh, what? Real Madrid was simple and easy and lightweight. No, that's what I mean. It's going to get... They, they're, they're, they're pretty... They're pretty uh, Real Madrid have been a bit, you know, dodgy, but I think Juventus are... Oh, a I reckon team. the multi-billion organisation that's behind them. There ain't nothing dodgy about a team that's got Zidane in it. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. and Ronaldo. Hey, that's some kind of dodgy. Yeah. Up against a bunch of 18-year-old Arsenal kids, you yeah, know? Yeah. Come on. Dodgy. It's going to be weird, isn't it, playing old uh, Vieira? Yeah, well, sod him. We're doing all right without him. <laughs> you know, superstars. I think when they get too big, get them out of your team. You don't need them. You know, mm. and they start trying to make out it's all about them. Because it ain't. Well, sod football. Anything else we can waffle on about? Oh, you've got the best of bread. Yes. Whoa, let's have a look. Oh, can I, was... I borrow your glasses? I'm blind as a bat, yeah, Steve. I'll, yeah, I'll look at the bottom bit. I was going to play track one. How about Nielsen Schmilzen? I've been trying to find that lately. <laughs> I can't I live, live. 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 without you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hear a bit of bread? Yeah, why not? Come on in. Yeah, I'll put that on. Slap, no, slap number one on. We've always been proud about being in it for the bread. Yes. You know, it's not too late to go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Monday, you know. It's all super. Yes. We could still make it. Well, funnily enough, our press agent's going. I have a friend with a pri <laughs> private plane. We could fly out there. <laughs> Got a corporate plane. Well, if you're unfortunate enough. If you're listening right now, you are listening to the voice of John Lydon. Hello, the kids are all right. Do you like that song? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> that, that's why I played it for you. <laughs> but you did like bread. Yeah. No, you were saying just there about Cliff Richards coming on and stuff. And what, people presume, you know, we should be enemies to people that have completely different points of view. No, it's never been like that with me or you. If someone completely believes in what they do, they're not my enemy, they're my friend. Yeah, yeah. might be totally alien to my way of life, but I respect them for... 
be able to present a case and yeah, believe yeah. it. Yeah. I don't like fake. I don't like middle washiness. And so good on you, Cliff Richards. You got him on. You know what? He didn't know one bleeding pistol song though. We were talking about the Queen. Yeah, he was very good at trying to ban us there for a few years with his Festival of Light stuff. Yeah. He yeah, did. he don't know one of our songs. <laughs> yeah, we love Cliff. He, 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 <laughs> he, um, he, uh, what did he do? There he, was uh, a time I almost pushed him off a cliff. I was that angry with him. But now I really like him. He, it's he, all right. He, uh, he was talking about being, in, you know, inducted into the knighthood. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh... I, we said, oh, yeah, the Queen. I said, yeah, we wrote a song called God Save the Queen. He's like, you did? What's it? What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how could you not know that? You know yeah, what I mean? right. He, he lives in a bubble, but I, I love him to death. I think he's great. I really do. There's something all right about certain people. I don't know what it is. He's, true, he's true to himself. Then that, that, then that be it. I, the words don't sum it up, but people who believe in what they do and, and can justify it properly yeah. are always going to be all right with me. Always, he, he was uh, he was he was coming out. Get get this. He's like, what is he got to be close to seventy? He was out here. He was going to do a showcase in New York at seventy. He's doing a showcase. Then he is a boy in a bubble, isn't he? Yeah, he's trying to make it. He's desperately trying to make it in America. I hope, I hope he does get some success. Well, he's been out seventy years. I mean, you know, it's bound to get a break sometime. <laughs> Let's hope it's not a leg. <laughs> <laughs> So what else you been? Let's hope he don't break his colostomy bag either. Oh, poor old Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I heard that about him. Is that true? I don't know if it's true or not, but it's a great bad rumour, isn't it? I was having a look you down know, there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> how damn I've burst my shopping bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh, it's disgusting. Um have you got is that bug? on the Discovery Channel. Is that coming out here or was that out? No, uh, yeah, oh, you're talking about that Mega Bugs thing bugs, I did. Bugs, yeah, it was yeah. a ten-part series for Discovery. Uh, they won't release it here. Why? No idea, no idea. Is it entertaining? Uh, it must be. It's bang on the money. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, from a man who's bragged about loving industrial car parks to be stuck in a bleeding jungle. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. It's just me being real. Well, you know, I like, I've, I study things, I read. I like to know how things work, Steve. Yeah. And um, I don't like killing anything. And so, you know, an ant crawling across a table fascinates me. Yeah. And so it just played in lovely to a, a ten-part series. It's ended up now in England on the universities, on the curriculums. Yeah. Um, and if you're talking about nominations, oddly enough, it was nominated and put up against Attenborough. Oh, <laughs> Lucky yeah. I came second. Yeah. Because it'd be another award I wouldn't be able to go and collect. Because <laughs> I feel kind of... I don't like awards, see, I feel ropey about them, but I do like doing work that's off the beaten track. Yeah, acknowledged, but left alone and not, not absorbed into the system. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there was many scorpions, a lot. Things that I would normally have been, like, spooked about. But the thing is, you see these things in the wild and they look different, they behave different. Right. You know, well, when I was young, I was never interested. It's like being stoned without the joint. Right, right. That's that's how our nature is with me. Well, did you, did you, when I was young, I don't know about you, I was never interested in looking at the sky or anything. When, no, you, get, when you get how older, could you, you get... how could you, Steve? Yeah. You know, another grey day in London. Yeah, <laughs> nothing to notice. But I didn't care. I didn't notice things when you're young, like at your life. You know, you no. didn't, you don't notice it. But older, well, I, I tell get... you, I, I did notice spots. Hello, Z pimples, zits? yeah, it's all zits. Yellow heads. Things like that, you know, things that made you worry and think people wouldn't like you for it. Right, yeah. Do you remember, do you remember my mate Jim Mackin? He had the worst skin under the planet. Yeah. I didn't realise at the time, he must have been tortured. Yeah, murder, yeah, so torture. The things a... we worry about, yeah. you know, the little vanities. But teenage years are the worst for it. Yeah. And, you know... You don't know what's going on. Yeah, and we didn't even have time to, like, you know, properly cultivate a few yellow heads because we're in the middle of that madness. Mm. It's all right, you know, when you're being discussed in Parliament under the Traitors Act, a pimple on the end of your nose takes second place. <laughs> Does, honest. <laughs> <laughs> Got to do a documentary about it. Starring <laughs> Cliff Richards' colostomy bag. <laughs> I bet that's got enough pimples. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny stuff. 
What do you think of old Bush? You think he's a uh, not Bush? The other uh, bloke. Bush. Well, it's a great reggae song. Like, Every hour I uh, stick a Bush. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Bush. He's like quail, isn't he? It's still the same old game with Republicans. They still can't spell potato. Uh. Uh, they're very good at, at, sh at shooting each other, too, these chaps. Uh, how you can mistake, you know... It's all the latest craze. You know, a, a very well-known banking millionaire for a quail with a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maybe he was looking for Dan Quail. We're back to can't spell potato. <laughs> Do you think he's in bed with our um, matey boy in England? Blair? Yeah. Somebody has to be. Yeah. Tony Blair, well, that, that man is somebody's poodle, right? I mean, he is. I mean, the original soup terrine, isn't it? The, you know, the goofy Ministry of Silly Walks bloke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? He's not bright, but he is conceited, <laughs> right? And he's a bit like... Tony Blair's a bit like a lawyer above a bookie office, yeah. you know, at the end of some, like, low-rent street. Yeah. Right, he's not the full shilling. I don't trust him, and I don't like it. I don't like extreme right. I don't like extreme left. I want common sense in all of it. You know, I've always been anti-politicians. Yeah. The whole lot of them. Yeah. All of them. They're, what's lying is their game. Yeah. That's why I like Margaret Thatcher. She didn't lie there for a long, long time. She was just right out plain nasty. Yeah. And I thought that's all right. We can live with that. Yeah. Wonder what she's up to. Well, she U-turned, didn't she? So. She got in bed with Reagan, you know? Right, that's it. So it always seems to go hand in hand, America and, and uh, England. Should do. Yeah. With similar cultures, you know, a bit of unity. I, see, I, I feel a little bit more loyal towards America than I do, say, backing up some French silly scallywag scheme. Right, right. Yeah. You know? Be honest. I love it here in America. I know, I do. I'm here, and I? I love it. People here are all right. People here, are, they're more friendly with each other and less suspicious and le less hateful. Not hateful if you do well, you know. They don't want to cut you down. That's it. And they don't mind having, having a... You can always have a second chance in America. You know yeah, I mean? Well, the fact is you can have a first chance too, and that's, that's a big enough thing. You mm. don't get that in England. Mm. You just don't. I tell you, like, particularly London, the way we grew up, to me... It was like crabs in a barrel. When one tries to get out over the top, the rest will pull it down. Mm -hmm. And that's how it is there. Yeah. Still is. Won't change. That's a great analogy. Oh, thank you. I really enjoyed it. He's that. analyzing me right now. <laughs> He's looking for those spots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny stuff. Um, I'll see you got Gene Pitney. Yes. What, do you know... What song do you like? Anything, then? really. Oh, look, it's nice a big town, writing. A town without pity. <laughs> we got to go. We got to visit the Duke. Yep. We'll be right back. We're here with John Lydon. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox. Thanks for listening. And this is a vintage best of the box here on 95.5 KLOS, and that is John Lydon, Johnny Rotten, of course, of the Sex Pistols. Coming up in the next hour will be the notorious manager of the Sex Pistols, the late Malcolm McLaren. But now we continue with Johnny Rotten, the best of the box on 95.5 KLOS. You're listening <clears throat> you're listen <clears throat> you're listen to Jonesy's Jukebox with my guest, John Lydon. Hello, John. Hello, John. How are you? Well, I'm all right, John. Jolly good. Nice to have us on, Steve, by the way. We'll have a good little chat like this in a nice, casual, human being way, like what people don't seem to think we are. Yes, I know. I know. You no, know, we're supposed to what? Sling mud at each other and, you know, throw naughty words all over the gaff and pose and, you know, but hello, we're sex pistols, we ain't fake. And we don't care. So there. Can I go home now? <coughs> In a minute. Only another 20 minutes. What are you going to do this afternoon? Anything? Have a kick? Oh, no, I'm going back to see Arsenal on the TV. They're going to show edited highlights. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Now, oh, hold well on. Look, we picked out this Gene Pitney record, and you and you reminded me of when we played Tulsa at the Pistols years ago. Twenty-four hours from Tulsa. That's the song. Right, the Christian fanatics that turned up. Yeah, they were they was bizarre. There is that is that a Christian town shovel, Tulsa? Is that like a, it's a dry state? A dry yeah. state. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, for these so-called alleged Christians, and there we are, we're just a bunch of soppy kids, I suppose, right? I mean, these sods had guns, right? 
they were absolutely blatant in their intent to kill us at all costs if they got the chance. And and the posters, one of them was some quote out of Leviticus, I suppose, a little bit, when the world turns to rottenness, blah, 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 you know. And they're going K -k -k with rifles and stuff, and, you know, and the police weren't particularly interested in our, in our benefit. No. We were there just to rock, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we're real glad we rocked their boat, because I tell you, if you can make those kind of, like, self-righteous sods that angry by not doing much at all, you're off to a good start in life. It, it's so hypocritical, though, all that Christian stuff, don't you think? Yep, it's as so always. hypocritical. It's... I have a simple point in life, that if you're going to believe in a religion fanatically, then you shouldn't have a responsible job like a politician. Because if you're prepared to believe in utter nonsense, you cannot make sense out of the rest of the world. Mm. Right? Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. They, they were Except the... if you're Cliff Richards. Can't ask me. <laughs> A catastrophe, colostomy. What about if? Uh, what about the other lot though in uh, Kafili where they was outside? The same kind same... of thing, but without the guns. Right. You see, I, I suppose that's the difference between the two cultures, that, isn't it? That was it. Yeah. You know, guns don't kill people. <laughs> yeah, right. But they were. They're so misinformed though. Both. Both well, places. Well, it's the need to justify whatever the cause is they have, and they'll they'll hold on to anything if they're given the chance to use that to present their own position. Yeah. So in other, in other words, we've always been everybody's like favourite whipping post, haven't mm -hmm. we? Mm -hmm. It's all right. I like a good whipping, mm -hmm. but it can go too far and it can get uh, taken too serious. And and by the time like craziness like that goes Southern American way. There's loaded guns pointing at you, and then it ain't so funny. Mm -hmm. But these fanatics would do that. It's like the meat is murder brigade, or you know, the animal activists. They don't mind slashing a human being, right. you know, <clears throat> for for their cause, or the or blowing up an abortion clinic yeah. because they love life so much they'll kill anyone to prove it. Yeah, bit of a wrong in there, isn't it? No, absolutely. It doesn't make any sense at all. You ain't got no cause on yourself. If you need to kill someone, you ain't got no cause. There's mm. nothing worth living for. Mm. As soon as you kill some other creature just for that, it's over. You're finished. It's always been like that. Do you, what do you think? Your view it's all right to eat beef, though, because cows are stupid. Yes. It's good to have a bit of, bit of mad cow now and again. <laughs> But do, what do, you, do you think abortion should be? Uh, it should be up to you, the, per, the I, woman. I've always thought it's up to the woman. You know the, the body song. I mean, that's from all sides of the border, right? But leave it open to the listener. Yeah, yeah. Right? I'm not pro-abortion or anti. I'm pro the choice of the woman. Actually, that should that should be their theme song, shouldn't it? It should be. Bodies. It should be, because it comes at it from a real common sense point of view. You can't just willy-nilly go out and have an abortion. You've got to know that it is a screaming bloody mess you're leaving on the table. Mm. A potential future human being. But that's a lot better than raising a child that's unwanted. Right. All right? And I ain't seen much good come out of orphanages and foster homes, I ain't. I've seen wounded people. Right. All right? They're literally the walking dead, and, and it's not right. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, there's, you know, you've got this now right-wing nonsense about um, uh, banning abortion because it's unchristian and immoral. Well, I'll tell you, you're going to have millions locked up and institutionalised from an early age. There's your future criminals, and they will be psychopathic because to grow up unloved is the worst thing in the world. You know this when you watch uh, laboratory rats. How they, if there's too many in a cage, they start chewing each other. Uh, this is what happens. Monkeys in zoos. Zoos are wrong too. It's the same thing. Yeah. They're emotionally starved. They shouldn't be locked up, you mean? Nothing should be like that. Mm. All right? So don't bring in a child into this world if you know you can't look after it. And no zoo. Thing. Yeah, and no zoos. No zoos. If you want to see monkeys, go to Africa. Yes. Right? I did. I've seen a lot of them. And they, and they liked me. Have you done a... You should do a documentary on monkeys. I did. You did? I did. Excellent. I did. Oh, yes, I went to <laughs> Rwanda, Steve. I did. Is that, I, is that a dodgy place there? Yes, it bloody well is. Yeah. It's a dangerous gap. But uh, Rwanda, particularly on the border with Uganda, but there was a lull in the fighting between the Hutsi and the Tutsi, right? right? And so in we went. And... Uh, for a laugh one evening, I got um, you know, kids from different villages to do a sing-song. 
wrapped yeah. around anarchy and God save the gorilla. Yeah. And no trouble. <laughs> and no trouble. God save the gorilla. Yes. They're probably... Uh... You know what I mean? They, um, for me, it's, it seems silly, but it's true. You go to Africa, and you understand the principle of the Garden of Eden, the, the kids, the, the people. They're, they're like really the real nice kids. Night, they're just fantastic yeah. people. They're yeah. natural. Yeah. Right? And it's whitey system that's got in there and corrupted them. Yeah. Right. It breaks your heart, I, I know, you? I know. It breaks I know. your heart, Steve. Every penny we had, we, we like, spent on buying biros for these poor little sods. Because they were begging for a pen to learn, you know, to write. Mm. There's no pens. They're not given any. They're kept, they're kept stupid. It's not right. The rich get richer and the poor get poor. Yes, fascist, chauvinist, government fools. <laughs> isn't, isn't, that, <laughs> isn't that a song? <laughs> isn't that, it, it, it's, it's not getting any better, it, Either all that situation. No, it ain't, is it? We thought this stuff we were writing years ago would, like, you know, be like looked as one as silly eventually, because you know mm. the world would be improved. It's, it's more wicked than ever, Steve. Mm. The us them. Yes. I know. know. It is. What are we gonna do, John? Well, I'll just carry on doing what I'm doing and tell it like it is. And if you know the powers that be don't like to listen to it, tough. I ain't stopping any time soon. Uh. You'll have to blow my f***ing head off, because that's the only way to stop me. Yeah. I just I can't stand injustice. I can't live with it. I don't like it. We know what it is. We grew up with it. All right? We're the scum of the earth, we are. We ain't so bad, and you're farting. I ain't. Mean, I'm just moving. It's the chair. Well. It's the ship rocking. <laughs> it's squeaking out of my other mouth. OK, let's play a bit of uh, 24 Hours from Tulsa. Yes, all you religious fanatics, get your guns primed and loaded. This is picked from Johnny Select. You are listening to Jonesy's Jukebox with my guest, John Lydon. Hi, John. Hi. Fantastic. To have you. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's funny being interviewed by someone I know so well. I don't know how to cope with this. It's a laugh, don't it? Excellent. Um, I, one thing I always wanted to watch, and I never got to watch it because I don't have a bleeding converter but your thing you did in the uh in england uh, uh get me out of here oh right the celebrity nonsense how'd that, how'd that come about for a couple of years they kept asking would i do it and i wouldn't and then out came the uh the uh, lull I'd, I'd bugger all else to do and i thought well two weeks in the jungle that might be a laugh and uh i could like scoop the money into some charities that i supported i so that's what i did i shifted a huge amount of money into quite a few different funds. Was it hard work being on that? Uh, hard, yeah, because you're you're under the camera 24 hours a day, so you you think you can't be yourself. But I just I just was myself, and that was it. I and stopped, you know, the, the need to try and put on an act or anything. I've always been this way, so I just carry on that way. Yeah. Um, ended up being one of Britain's most loved people, which was not on my agenda. <laughs> That's amazing. I you mean... know, I thought, you know, just get, you know, oh, look, he's horrible as usual. Um, I know it annoyed a lot of people, like, you know, presuming that I was doing this because I wanted to be famous. and it, I'm not like that. I never yeah. have been. Yeah. I did it for a laugh, you know. And when it came time to, uh, you know, who'd win, you know, and all that, and who's going to stay the longest, I, I walked because I I'm, don't do anything for competition mm. or to score one above anybody else. Mm. But I raised a serious amount of good charity money. Yeah. All right? And I wouldn't even mention that, Stephen. I've kept that side of my life quiet for a long, long time. But for the fact that I had to deal with these outrageous British newspaper allegations that I was doing it all for the money. Mm. And you know, and I was some kind of greedy, celebrity, hungry git. And that's, unfortunately, the way the world is. You yeah. have to answer these yeah. accusations or that you will be forever, like, smeared with them. Yeah, yeah. And so there it is. I suppose for, for both of us, being a sex pistol right from the beginning is we have to constantly fight off allegations and accusations, mm. like we've done something wrong, mm. when, frankly, it's the rest of the world, mm. not us. Mm. We got it right. Mm. All right? The rest of you are still in two left shoes. Hmm. Well, I know something I've always wanted to ask you. Why, why have you, you never wanted to write any more Pistol songs? 
I felt, and I still do, that it would be wrong, my heart and soul. Mm. I loved that period, and when it broke up, it really hurt my heart mm. big time. Mm. All right? Really hurt me, mm. and I and I don't want to go back. Oh, I see. Right? Yeah. I really loved it, but it was time to go elsewhere. And once I started in Pill, rocket to yeah. another level, different level. Not competition, just a different part of my world. Right. I miss the pistols, I miss a lot of you. Yeah. Well, we had fun the last time we toured. I, I had a good time. That little tour we did across yeah. America. But not always, because that's life, isn't it? Of course. It and is. anyone who thinks it's all a jolly good wheeze, it's not. Being it's, in a band, it's hard work. when you mean what you do, it's hard, it's hard work. work. And you've got to watch yourself I mean, it's 24 hours a day. It's the same as being on that celebrity thing. Yeah. I enjoyed the last tour, though, better than the, that big one we did. To me, that was that was too much, yeah. Steve. It was around the world, and it felt like nine months of it was like a year. you know, it was you know. A year with a break. I like I, when I came home from that. Yeah, nearly a year. That's right. When we came back, uh, I couldn't get adjusted. I couldn't settle down. I felt I'd come back from Mars or something. Yeah, you know, it felt weird. really out of place. It took a long, long time mm. to to get back into a normal way of life. Do you think most bands have the same? the same you know nonsense that goes on i can see the need for drugs for some people big time because you need to cover up that pain and that gap and that pressure yeah but the more drugs you take the worse the pressure right it's and, and the monotony as well and the monotony. It's monotony, monotonous isn't it? well what is it it's 12 hours of panic to do an hour and a half show right you know and you know me i'm vomiting all day long with fear <laughs> i can't help it i get really worried about it yeah. stage fright whatever it is but, but that's what gives you your big, when you come on stage, your my big, big persona. Yes. Well, I've lost the stomach lately. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one of the best gigs I thought we ever did. Was... I worry, Steve, I worry. Yeah. I want to do the best I can with whatever I do, but unfortunately, I tend to annoy everybody <laughs> around me doing it. <laughs> I mean, well, but I don't get no tea. I thought I thought uh, Finsbury Park was one of the most best shows for me. We, great mad crowd. We huh? didn't play great because we'd just gotten going, but I yeah. thought as far as coming me, home gig, it was brilliant. Yeah, for me, it's about the crowds and how they behave, and accordingly. See, Glasgow is a place I've loved playing yeah. all my life, and yeah. that is a volatile, violent crowd. Yeah, very few bands can go there and come out of that place smiling. Right, we've never had a, had a squeak out of them. No, they were great. Bang were on great. us! Bang on us! Support us! And very mad places around the world. The more loonier the gaffs, actually, the more they liked us. The only trouble we really have ever had is in squeaky little places like Italy, you know? <laughs> Where these are alleged Christians. And they like to hide out in the crowd and throw the bottles sneakily from the side. Oh, that was the worst gig we did in that, what was it, that festival? Yeah, remember? our open festival. In, in Holland, wasn't it? Uh, mm. the, yeah, Ross Gilder. Good. Ross Gilder Festival, that was a nightmare. We went on shovel and uh, big cider bottles. There was a little crowd yeah. like in back a little bit. It was all stand it was brilliant when we just stow shot there's all these flags and fire fires going, you know, it's it's unbelievable. Like hundred thousand punters. And there was just one little mob who just kept yeah. slinging these bottles and John kept saying, Look, stop slinging them, we're gonna go off. Played another song and kept slinging them. Yeah. So we left after like bleeding four songs, I think, three or four songs. That was the worst gig ever. Yeah, because well, it's like this. No, it don't make us wankers. It, it's plain and simple to me. I ain't going to get blinded by some coward getting away with that. Yeah. All right? And and if crowds don't learn to police themselves, then don't, please don't ask us to be your victims. All right? If you're going to pay money to go and try and blind someone, you're the kind of person that should be put away for life. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because your intent is wrong, and it ain't nothing like ours. Mm. Right, they belong in a different planet, those kind of sneaky coward pigs. It's never face to face, is it? It's always hiding in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. The very people actually we hate the most. <clears throat> Shame. And well in Italy, for instance, you remember those travellers who came? Now some of these were little kids, you know, and like proper punk travellers. So, and these Italians, like these Italian football hooligans, were trying to throw beer bottles to hurt these little kids. That kind of cowardice, mm. you know? Italian, you're mafia, you are not much. Italians will hit you. <laughs> you're nothing. Soprano. Nobody. I can't wait for that to start, though. Soprano. That's a good series. Oh, I love it. It's starting soon, I think. I think it's like next week or something. Best thing on HBO. 
excrement. Yes. Right, I need to go and have another poo, Steve. Well, it's, I, I and, think, it, and it's two. I think we're knocking it on the head. Uh, what are we doing? Visiting the Duke? What's what, the Duke? What, what does the, that mean? The Duke of Kent. We're paying the rent. <laughs> going to commercials. It's a long story. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to... Oh, uh, I forgot. Look, no underpants. Wow. <laughs> Inside stockings. <laughs> Fishnets. Do you know what they are? <laughs> They're Samsonite travel pants, which you get free with British Airways. Oh, and you no. First class. So I had to have a pair. And look at them. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's, that's kinky blue, isn't it? Isn't it? Fishnets in trousers. Oh, Malcolm would kill for these. Tony Blair must have come up with them. Um, mm -hmm. Let's go and visit the Duke. We're hearing John Lydon. We'll be right back after his messages to.